So a lot of the science being done on the International Space Station designed to learn more about how the human body responds to extended periods of time in the weightless environment of space. The space station crew members themselves serving as those test subjects. Uh, one new experiment in this area, which is actually sponsored by the Canadian Space Agency, recently got underway, and it's called the Marrow Study, which is actually uh, looking at bone marrow in these astronauts. Uh, recently, my colleague Brandy Dean spoke with the experiment's pr principal investigator, uh, Dr. Guy Trudell, a professor of medicine, surgery, and biochemistry at the University of Ottawa, and also with one of his co-investigators, Dr. Odette Lenouville of the University of Ottawa, and asked what they suspect is happening to the bone marrow of astronauts during long-duration missions in space. We're a group of scientists at the Bone and Joint Research Lab, and we're focusing our research on the biology of rehabilitation. So when decreased physical forces are acting on the bone, as you described, there are changes on, changes on the bone itself, on the bone structure. But we were interested in what's happening with the other role of the bone as an organ, and that's really the role of the bone marrow inside the bone to form the, all the blood elements, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. So in our experiments related to immobility, removing the physical forces on the bone, we noticed uh, spectacular changes in the bone marrow in some model, is in that the bone marrow shifted from being full of cells producing the red blood cells and the white blood cells uh, to a bone marrow more filled with fat cells. So an, a, a fat transformation of the bone marrow. Okay, so um, if fat cells reduce blood cell population in bone marrow, what, what happens to the astronaut? So if that process is led to its worst case scenario, that is a bone marrow failure, then you are unable to mount a response to produce the blood cells that you need uh, for survival, basically. So bone is a rigid structure. So if you have invasion of one of its components, it's at the expense of the other component. So what would be examples of symptoms happening from a bone marrow failure? So basically, the lack of production of your red blood cells will lead to anemia. So a person who is anemic will be weaker, will have less resistance, less force, less endurance, which could uh, compromise a mission. Uh, dysfunctioning white blood cells or low number of white blood cells will make you more susceptible to infections or autoimmune diseases. The last function of the bone marrow is the production of platelets, and these are responsible to stop the bleed and to create a blood clot. So the changes that we've measured in the uh, models and in bedridden patients uh, are showing some smaller changes in fat accumulation. But if that were to be uh, extrapolated to a longer mission in microgravity, this could lead to uh, a bone marrow failure. I see, okay. Well, so how, how does your investigation, the Maravit investigation, how does it um, look at that in astronauts in particular? So the uh, protocol we've developed is to gather some biological sample from the astronauts pre-flight, during flight, and after flight. And the protocols and methods that we developed was in collaboration with the Canadian Space Agency in uh, Canada. And uh, with, uh, through a team effort, we were able to design some sampling methods that will allow us to estimate or to measure how much fat is in the marrow and that will be using uh, magnetic resonance imaging and coupled to spectroscopy and also to look at the blood itself uh, through samples of blood uh, collected over time so the sampling for alveolar air or breath will be pre-flight during flight and post-flight so for this we had to design this contraption that we use for collecting the alveolar air and not the air that is uh, present in the uh, airways. And so, so the temporal study, we will be able to uh, estimate and measure the impact of microgravity exposure on the content, on the fat content of the marrow. Uh, I think what is key uh, or what is of high interest for our team 
is the post-flight period and rehab. How does the uh, body and the marrow uh, return to a normal state after flight? So we will monitor those participants, those astronauts, over an extensive, uh, over a year post-flight. And um, we are very thankful that the, for those who already have agreed to participate and uh, those who will in future participate in MARO uh, while on board of the ISS. How do you expect that this experiment is going to help us as we're going forward in future exploration? As you alluded to earlier, this will have um, implications for astronauts on long duration flights and upon their return. Um, for example, <clears throat> uh, we want we will evaluate if the phenomenon happens uh, and how it evolves over time. Um, it will allow to uh, develop countermeasures. Uh, what could prevent this uh, fat accumulation in the bone marrow? Uh, how fast does it progress? And uh, when does it start to affect the red and white blood cell production? Um, countermeasures may be uh, brought on board long duration missions, such as the duration to Mars. That can be physical countermeasure, could be pharmacological countermeasures as well. And I know you also mentioned that um, you were working with bed rest patients as well. So are there, are there implications to this that could help them in the future or any of us here on Earth? Brandy, you're talking to a rehabilitation physician. So re this is really the angle that we have uh, taken to approach this topic. Uh, when you receive uh, in a rehabilitation center uh, patients who have been in hospital for a long time who are deconditioned, and you need to bring them back to their previous level of health and of function, then you have to look at the restoration of every system. Of those, there is the bone system, muscle system, balance. And so when an astronaut comes back from a long-term mission, uh, he presents many of the same characteristics as a rehab patient on Earth who has been immobile for a long period of time. Now, specifically for marrow, um, Many of those patients who have limited mobility, who have been in bed for a long time, or even in our Western societies, the sedentary lifestyle, or the change in demographics where people move less and less, we do notice higher proportion of anemia, more susceptibility to infection. So our findings could apply to the large number uh, on this. That's definitely good news for us and the astronauts then. We really appreciate you talking with us. Again, this was Dr. Guy Trudell and Dr. Odette Lenouville from the University of Ottawa talking to us about their work with the Marrow Investigations. Thanks so much. Pleasure. Our pleasure.